Why do we parents get stuck in survival mode, feeling like we're drowning, feeling like I can't handle what's on my plate, feeling like it's all too much? Today, you're gonna find out three habits that keep us stuck there and what we can do to get out of it. Hi, I'm Avital, this is HiFab. And I am so thrilled to be letting you know that The Studio, my annual membership with thousands of members from all over the world, is open right now. So before we get into these habits and how to get out of them, I just have to let you know ahead of time that I can coach you through this and help you implement step by step. I can help you to create a family life that you love. Now, I bet you already have a lot of amazing things going for your family, and I bet you enjoy your time as a parent a lot of the time. But if it feels like you're in survival mode more often than not, if it feels like there's something missing, if it feels like it always seems like the answer is more and more giving, more and more parenting, more attention, more special time, and it just kind of feels like you're just depleting yourself and working so hard, but with nothing to really show for it, I wanna invite you into the studio. I know for me, I wanna feel like if I'm working this hard, if I'm giving all of this time, energy, money, sleepless nights, and this labor of love, I want to at least feel really gratified, satisfied, fulfilled. I wanna feel like I can enjoy it like I can enjoy my children's childhood right now. And like I can offer them a childhood that they won't have to recover from. I want a cherished childhood for my children. I want lifelong togetherness. I want to raise resilient kids. And so I want to know that all the work I'm doing right now while they're young is going to pay off. Like they're going to turn out okay. That's exactly what I can help you create inside the studio. So just go to hifam.com forward slash the studio. You can pause this video and go and join right now and then come back and hear the three habits that get you out of survival mode. Now, whenever I talk about survival mode, I like to make a differentiation between kind of hardcore objective real survival mode, like you're living through a crisis, a tragedy, a shock, a horror, right? And the colloquial kind of term that we use for feeling stressed, feeling overwhelmed, feeling like I can't get ahead of anything, feeling like my to-do list is just drowning me, or feeling like I'm never really able to take a deep breath and feel control, feel success, feel equipped to handle what I have going on in my life. That's the type of survival mode that I'm addressing here today. Now, I can also coach you through the more extreme survival mode, like living through disease, turmoil, a war. But today, we're going to talk about that kind of, let's call it privileged or first world survival mode that many of us use. Just this week, one of my coaching clients told me, I'm stuck in survival mode. I've been in survival mode for months. And then she broke it down for me. And what she meant by that was, my kids have been sick a lot. I feel like I'm chasing my tail. I've been arguing with my husband. I feel like I don't get a moment to myself. My nights are sleepless. My house is chaos. It's not fun. It feels confusing. It feels overwhelming. It feels chaotic. There's a lot of conflict. Those are the types of feelings that we have when we're in this survival mode. So let's break down what survival mode is versus thriving mode, right? Survival versus thriving. And what the difference is in our brains and the way we think about ourselves and in these habits that I'm about to outline for you between someone who feels like they're just surviving and someone who feels like they're thriving. So let's take a look at the systems that are in place in our brain and our bodies in order to control these two modes that we have and how we can use that to further understand how we can move away from survival and into thriving. The survival mode is really another way of saying the fight or flight instinct, right? It's the sympathetic system in our body that is in charge of responding to a crisis, of keeping us alive when we're being hunted or when there's some kind of shock that's going to occur. Our entire body stops all regular business and is all recruited into keeping us alive. So we're heightened senses, we're very reactive, we're feeling extremely present in the moment, we're very alert. That's that fight or flight mode, preparing us to run, right? It's preparing us for strenuous physical activity like running or fighting. 
This is where we feel our heart pumping, right? Blood is rushing through our body. Our cheeks are getting flushed. All of our senses are on high alert and we are ready, right? Ready to pounce, ready to react, ready to respond. We've got to be quick. We don't have time to think. And that is one of the big indicators of being in the fight or flight mode is that we don't have filters. We don't have prefrontal cortex engagement, the part of the brain that is responsible for thinking through consequences and for planning ahead. In contrast, the parasympathetic system is where we rest and digest. This is also where we can imagine, get creative, plan for the future, think problems through, come up with thoughtful solutions. We're not reactive, we're not in high stress mode, we're not all recruited, and the regions of our brain are far more balanced with the primal region resting and digesting and our prefrontal cortex engaged. So what do we need to do to stop thinking of ourselves as in survival, as in that fight or flight mode every single day as parents? Well, what I want you to try to establish are the habits that signal to your body that things are okay, that we are safe, that the saber-toothed tiger isn't currently chasing us, so we can just enjoy the campfire, chat to friends, and maybe think about the future. So let's outline the habits that can get us there. First is the habit that we would kind of fall into if we were in this survival mode mindset. And one of the first habits that is a signal or a symptom of being stuck in survival mode is disorganization, the disorganized habit, let's call it, right? Why? Well, if I'm about to fight for my life, I don't have time to put things away properly. I can just dump everything on the floor. I just throw things. I just, you know, haphazardly move through the space, right? I don't have time to think about creating order when I'm in survival mode. And you might notice this about yourself as a parent. When you're in survival mode, laundry just gets thrown on the floor. The dishes just get thrown in the sink, right? Everything gets haphazardly thrown around and we become really disorganized and our physical space becomes disorganized. Now, the problem with all of these habits is that they become a vicious cycle where that behavior triggers yet more survival instinct, yet more fight or flight mode because it stresses us to see the clutter, the overwhelm, the disorganization. It makes us feel like we are in chaos and like we need to survive, right? Like we need to be defensive in this environment. We can't relax and be calm. It's messy. And if you think about it in nature, when there is a, you know, imminent threat, there's chaos involved. Things like hurricanes or war bring with them literal physical destruction and chaos, and they trigger a sense in us that something is drastically wrong. That's the survival mode. So how do we flip this habit and bring ourselves down, calm our nervous systems down, get cool as a cucumber, and feel like we can actually enjoy parenting? There are several habits that I teach you inside of the studio that are all about streamlining your environment, getting organized, physically decluttering, and creating a home that you love to be in. That's your most favorite place on earth. Now, mind you, this isn't about having fancy interior designers or a big budget. This isn't about, you know, stuff. This is about feeling a sense of organization, of control, that things have a place that I feel like my home makes sense for the type of life that I wanna live, that it's supporting me and my children and bringing out the best behavior in us, that it's actually signaling that parasympathetic system and allowing us to go into rest and digest where we're all more thoughtful, more mindful, calmer, happier, and more able to enjoy our lives together as a family. If you want to get out of survival mode, here is the important habit that you have to establish. You have to get organized. You have to get streamlined. You have to adopt what I call the home habit. You have to do a house shred with me. You have to high vibe your home. Again, these are all skills that I teach inside the studio. Go to highfam.com forward slash studio and stack these habits with me. These are the family habits that make all the change in our lives as parents. The second habit that keeps you stuck in survival mode and how to get out of it. Now this is a counterintuitive one because upfront it seems like a good habit. What is it? It's living in the moment. Yeah, being really present in our bodies and just living in the moment or being spontaneous. Now, of course, being spontaneous, living in the moment, being present, all of these can be really positive when they come from the rest and digest system, when they come from thriving. 
But when we're in the moment, because we're in survival mode, then they are actually a signal that we are overwhelmed, that we are underplanned and under-supported and under-resourced, that we are kind of flying by the seat of our pants. And that's not usually a great feeling for anyone. It's not the fun kind of spontaneity. It's the kind of spontaneity that leads me to have a bedtime that just drags on for two hours and I'm getting more and more upset, angry, frustrated, and resentful until I explode at my children because I was living in the moment. Do you know what I mean? It's the kind of living in the moment where at 6 p.m. I still haven't got anything planned for dinner and now I'm panicking, so I just order takeout because I'm living in the moment, right? And it's not really because, hey, I want to have a fun evening and get takeout tonight. I'm not doing it from a good place, a place where I feel in control, where I'm making conscious choices and intentional plans. I'm doing it because I have no other choice, because my back is against the wall, because time is just running away from me and I'm not able to keep up. It's the feeling of being a chicken without a head or chasing my own tail. It's not a good feeling. This living in the moment is actually stressful. It's actually a habit of being stressed, of being last minute, of missing things, of feeling that chaos of time just slipping through my fingers and not being able to grasp it and make the most of it. But the truth is that our time is the most precious resource we have. It's one of the only resources in our lives that are absolutely not renewable and that once it's gone, it's gone. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in regrets for how I spent my children's childhood. I don't want to look back and think, wow, I was all over the place. I couldn't get it together. I was a hot mess and I was always stressed. I don't want to spend it just waiting for the day to end because I need a break. I don't want to spend it feeling like I keep missing opportunities and like I'm never really present in a good way because I'm always caught off guard by the next thing that's going to hit me on my schedule. Like, I'm shocked that it's suddenly dinner time. Like, what, they have to eat again? (laughs) But they ate yesterday. (laughs) And I'm shocked that it's already 9 p.m. and no one's even in pajamas. Those are the types of shocks and spontaneity that don't leave us feeling good. What they, in fact, leave us feeling is completely out of control, which is not something any of us enjoy. And that's why I want you to switch this habit. The habit that we're going to install instead is being planned out. It's the ritual habit, the traditions habit, the rites of passage habit. It's the habit of creating flow. It's the habit of having morning routines and bedtime routines and creating peaceful routines that bring me a lot of joy, that create that consistency, the predictability, the reliability that makes everybody feel safe and calm, that makes everybody behave better, that makes everybody know what to expect and what's coming next so that we can get out of survival mode and thrive. And then if I sometimes want to break those rules and be spontaneous, then cool, more power to me. But at least I know I have a reliability to fall back on. The truth is that children are creatures of routine. They like rhythm. They like predictability. And I think humans do in general. We have our circadian rhythms, our monthly rhythms, our seasonal rhythms. And these rhythms bring us a lot of joy, a lot of anticipation, a lot of clarity. We know what to expect and when to expect it. And it helps to soothe us and give us a sense of control in the world. It actually helps us to be even more creative and spontaneous because we know that there are reliable things that we don't mess with, right? That are predictable, as predictable as the sun rising in the morning. So I want you to move from the destructive habit of being in the moment, aka chasing my tail, being stressed out, that stressed habit, and into the habit of being planned out, the habit of actually taking time to review, to plan, to decide what are our routines, what are our rituals, what will our vacation look like, what do our weekends look like, how should we manage our mornings, our evenings, These are exactly the skills that I will teach you inside of the studio. Again, go to highfam.com forward slash studio. Join me because that is where I can help you to establish this sense of thriving, this rest and digest, this parasympathetic system where you can be calm, in control, cool as a cucumber, and actually a lot more present. The third habit that keeps you stuck in survival mode and how to get out of it is self sacrifice. That's right. Listen, I'm all about giving and generosity and showing up for your family. But the truth is that self-sacrifice is none of those things. 
If you think about someone in survival mode, they aren't thinking about their long-term well-being. All they want to do is get out of harm's way. They have to escape an imminent danger, and so they can't invest in themselves and in their long-term well-being at all. In fact, they might sacrifice their long-term wellness in order to prioritize their immediate survival. And I bet you've had those kind of moments, right? Where, I don't know, for me, it's like I'll stuff my face with chocolate just to like survive and get through the evening. But in the long term, that wasn't a good choice for me and it didn't really truly take care of me or nourish me, right? It's like maybe I'm in survival mode and I think, well, I just, I need to take care of myself. I need something for myself. I need a moment away from my kids. So I'm just going to scroll on Facebook at night. And then it's suddenly 2 a.m. and I'm still on my phone. And I've sacrificed my real nourishing, my sleep, my hygiene, my wellness, my well-being for the sake of kind of a band-aid solution, right? That's that self-sacrifice where I'm leaving everything on the table, where I'm giving up basic care of myself as an individual, my physical care, my emotional care, my social care, etc., in order to keep showing up on this kind of rat race treadmill that, oh my gosh, pause, I want to get off, right? The mindset that I want you to develop instead is to adopt the habit of self-care. Self-care is a habit of sustainability. It's a habit of taking care of yourself so that you can continue to show up well. Yes, we want to show up with full energy, we want to be able to be present, we want to be the most loving parent we can be, but we can't do that if we're in self-sacrifice mode. Self-sacrifice makes us edgy, aggravated, easily irritable, and in the long term, it can have some pretty detrimental results. Whereas self-care means that I really know my value and I continue to show up for my family because I know they need me. They need me energized, they need me well-nourished, They need me to have good sleep hygiene. They need me to have good friendships and meaning in my life. They need me to show up as a whole and complete and happy and, you know, balanced person who is able to care for them in a sustainable manner over the long haul. This is the mindset that remembers that parenting is a marathon, not a sprint. Remember, a sprint is a very survival mode mindset. Just quickly get there, just as fast as you can. You're basically throwing all of your energy out, but it can't last very long. A marathon is where we pace ourselves and we sustain ourselves. We have to stop for a granola bar or something once in a while because we know we have to keep on keeping on. Now, there are particular and very important habits of self-care. And if this is something that you struggle with, like, oh, I don't even feel worthy, or how do I even find the time, or I haven't, you know, worked out for three years, I haven't eaten healthy for, for 10 years, or since before the kids were born, I haven't had a single night's sleep. If that's something you can relate to, like not getting enough time to have a shower or to go out with the girlfriends from time to time, then I want you to join the studio where I'm going to help you to really take care of yourself, right? Whether it's in the fit fam habit that I help you establish family fitness, whether it's in mom glow up where I help you to feel great in your skin and look your best, or whether it's in fam rest where I help you to get the best night's sleep that you can for you and your children. All of these things are completely possible. They're all just a list of habits, really good habits, that lead to a good family life. If you want to enjoy your family life, get out of survival mode, not feel so stuck, I want to tell you that it's entirely possible. I remember a time not so long ago where I felt I felt like a victim. I felt sorry for myself. My head hit the pillow every day with every bone in my body exhausted and frustrated. And I felt resentful because I was working on myself more and more and more. I was doing all the self-growth and watching the mommy blogs and reading the experts and the parenting books. And it seemed to me like the only answer was give more, do more. You have to perfect the scripts. You have to perfect your performance. You have to master yourself more. You have to grow more. And I just wasn't measuring up. I just did not feel good enough. I walked around with bundles of guilt because I knew I shouldn't be yelling or I shouldn't do special time or I should give them more attention. And I wasn't managing to really get a handle on all of the long list of things that I had to do. But (laughs) it took a long time and a lot of trial and error and research and deep soul searching where I discovered that actually the answer wasn't me taking on more and more and maintaining this survival mode lifestyle. That in fact, that was unsustainable. That in fact, that was running me ragged. It meant that I was twisting myself in pretzels and bending over backwards, but with not much to show for it. 
In fact, if I'm entirely honest with you, I think my children were behaving even worse as a result of me being so, I guess, self-centered, self-absorbed with my conscious parenting journey. It felt more like a self-conscious parenting journey. And that's when I took a step back and re-evaluated. And I started to really dive into other worlds as well as parenting, into the world of business, into the world of finance, into the world of fitness, all these other realms of coaching and ideas and ways of, you know, kind of optimizing our lives. And what I realized was this, amazing families are really just built one amazing habit at a time. Really, we can break it down. I don't need to parent more and more. What I need to do is establish great habits. Because when you get a great habit established, it becomes second nature. Like if our kids just brush their teeth every day, we no longer need to parent them about that because it's a habit. They just brush their teeth. Now my family is in the habit of just having family meals, sitting around the table and asking each other how our day was. And that habit has really outsized results in terms of how it brings us closer together, builds resilience, and helps me convey common sense and values and impart wisdom to my children, but also stay connected and bonding with them and create a real sense of togetherness. Now, it doesn't demand more and more parenting from me. I don't need to do more self-growth and soul-searching and dig into my history and figure out all my traumas. Instead, I just need to establish a positive habit and let us ride on that and cash in with all the benefits that it offers. There are fantastic habits like time in nature or time away from tech or working together as a team to do the chores in the house or even creating family albums regularly. And these are all things that I teach you inside of the studio in a stackable, streamlined, systematized way to make it easy, to make it approachable, to make it relieve you and make it easier for you than all of that parenting that you've been needing to do up until now. So I warmly invite you into the studio. Doors are closing soon. Make sure you get in there now because we're starting and I can't wait to see you on the inside. If this spoke to you, make sure to share it with a friend, hit that like button and the subscribe and bell, and definitely leave me a comment below and let me know which of these three survival mode habits you're going to get out of and thriving mode habits you're going to get into. Keep on living that high fam life. I'll see you next time.